this is a little different than the training room where we used to meet the press after the game. <laughs> How, how would you like your KU coaching career to be remembered? Say that again. How would you like your KU coaching career to be remembered? I think the most important thing, uh, and particularly as the years go along, and I'll talk a little bit about that tonight, but uh, the relationship with your players and, and, the, uh, and the productive lives that they've lived after that, I, I, I think that's the measure of whether we were successful or not. Ted, <clears throat> tell me, you had a chance to see the film a few times. Did JoJo White step out of bounds, in your opinion? <laughs> <laughs> well, as unbiased as I am in this, uh, 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 if you ask JoJo, of course, he'll say, Coach, I was in bounds. The truth of the matter is that we were completely across the court from this. And... Uh, the worst thing that happened, it went in, and then the official, uh, we were celebrating. I mean, we were out on the court and, and celebrate. We're on the way to the Final Four and the chance to win the national championship, and I think a very good chance to win the national championship. And uh, uh, the official called it pretty late. And uh, the, uh, what this, if you, today with all the camera angles you have, there'd be no question whether he was in or out of bounds. Uh, based on the sequence of shots, it looked like the, he pivoted, but his heel never came down. It was above the plane, but his heel never came down, and he, uh, he never was out of bounds. But what the sequence of shots shows clearly, that Rudy Marich, the official, never saw where his, his vision was up all the time. The whole sequence of shots shows his vision up. And, and uh, quite frankly, I think he saw where he landed. He floated after he landed, and 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 he called it based on on that. But uh, you only have so many chances to win national championships, and and uh, we had a really a, a great opportunity to do that. Uh, you, uh, what really aggravates me is is when you. Uh, saw the uh, movie uh, that they they had uh, the whole sequence was wrong. Uh, it, it occurred in the first overtime. We had the ball with seven seconds to go. Al Lopes forced a charge, and we get the ball back with the score tied. And then we had an out of bounds play uh, that we called out of bounds score that we usually ran in that circumstance. And we decided we're going to get the ball in JoJo's hands and clear everybody down, and if they double off of him, whoever's open steps into the open uh, spot. So uh, we get it to JoJo, and he penetrates and goes to the left, as, as you know, and, and, and hits a shot at, at the gun. Um, but the movie had it in the second overtime and had uh, Texas Western up by one, and then when they disallowed it, that ended the game, and that wasn't how it happened. But that wasn't what bothered me about the movie. What bothered me about the movie was that Don Haskins is not nearly as good looking as I am. And they had this handsome guy playing him. And, uh, and they had this really round, fat guy uh, playing me. And I think that's what bothered me more than anything else. Okay. You ever wonder if, if JoJo wouldn't have been called out of bounds? Would history have been, how much would a history change with <coughs> Texas Western not going to play Kentucky and things like that? Well, you know, uh, and, I, and I like what Don Haskins said. You know, the, they attributed that game to, to the breaking of racial uh, uh, barriers. The truth of the matter is, when I came here in 1960, which was six years before then, we were starting four black players at that time. I mean, uh, 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 they didn't break the racial uh, barrier. Uh, the, uh, there are a lot of us who had, uh, who had done that before. And even Don Haskins said, which is the way we should all have looked at it, he said, I never thought about breaking racial barriers. I thought about winning basketball games, and I wanted to get the best players that I could get. And, of course, that's the way it should have been all the time. 
talk about Dick Harp and what he meant to Kansas basketball and how you'd like for him to be remembered? Well, I, I remember him as the man who gave me an, an opportunity to coach it at this level. And he not only was a great mentor for me in, in, in the game of basketball, but uh, personally. Um, uh, he shared his faith with me, a faith that, that uh, I've carried for the rest of my life. Uh, he was, uh, played an enormous, made an enormous impact in my life. Uh, I'm really grateful to, that I had the opportunity to spend four years with Coach. And, and, and many years after that uh, with our association when he was with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. What's changed most since your time here? Say that again. What's changed most since your time at Allen Fieldhouse? Oh, uh, mostly the floor. Uh, the, most of the years that I coached, it was a dirt floor, and it was elevated above. And and the the real problem was that for some reason that uh, they did not uh, put the floor in until the day the day before we started practice. Uh, and so Skinny Replogle and his crew would be out uh, and putting it up. And uh, until then, our players worked out over at Old Robinson Gymnasium. And, uh, but um, uh, then as soon as the season was over, they took the floor out. And so when we brought in prospects, it was a big old barn out there. And then in the course of practice, uh, our great track team, and we had a wonderful track uh, program then uh, with Bill East and then later with Coach Timmons. Um, uh, they practiced the same time we did, and so they would water the track, but after a while the dust would kick up. We'd have to sweep the court four or five times during, during practice. Uh, Allen Fieldhouse was not at that time a great place to practice. We had nets up and canvases up to try to gain a measure of uh, privacy. And, uh, and I'm, I was telling this to someone today, I have a problem in that I grew up in the Great Depression on a cotton farm in southwest Oklahoma. And my dad taught me, you don't complain about anything. If, the, if that sand and dust blows your crop out, you go plant again. And so uh, uh, complaining was not never an option with my dad. And I, but I think it was to a fault uh, that I grew up, if things weren't exactly right, I, did, I just adjusted and so forth. And I think sometimes as coaches, you have to complain or you have to make other people realize that if you're going to be competitive, uh, then you're going to have to measure up and – we're on, like Roy said, you know, we're on this facility run now. And, uh, but if you're going to get players, you have to have good living conditions. You have to have good eating conditions. You have to have good study conditions and, 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 and so forth. And if I have, if I fault myself about anything, it was not complaining about conditions that were really detrimental to us in recruiting and uh, in, 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 in practice. About a minute. Tell me about the 50 point game by Bud Stallworth. What did that mean to you? Well, it, 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 uh, I'll talk about that tonight. And Tom, I'd rather not say anything more because uh, I want Bud to give me a good introduction uh, <laughs> uh, tonight. Uh, so, uh, if, if, will you hold that until uh, the post game? The, uh, it was a, it was a great day, and uh, uh, it was an afternoon nationally televised game. Uh, we were uh, uh, we were uh, celebrating the 20th anniversary of the 1952 winning the uh, team winning the national championship, and all of the great players Clyde and Bill and Bill and Bob and, and uh, Charlie and, and all all of them were. Um, uh, we're here for the game, and, and uh, uh, but not only for him to score 50, but to lay it on the Tigers. And, and believe me, Norm's a great defensive coach, and he did everything that day, double team, triple team, and, and whatever, and Bud just backed up a little further 
out there. You know, the interesting thing, if he had done that today, he would have had 63 points. 13 of those shots were, uh, were as we look back at it, were uh, three-point shots. Ted, you talk about the way the field house was before when you were coaching here. I mean, could you have possibly imagined then that, that this building would still be in use at this time? Well, I want to tell you, uh, the architects and the contractors and so on, they built a, an incredible building, didn't they? And uh, yeah, But that's the beauty of it. It combines the solid structure and, and the, uh, the rock of a, of a uh, historic program here, uh, uh, but we add the modern amenities and, and so forth. So it's a it's, it's it's a nice combination of the old and new. You just you can go into these new arenas around the country and so forth, but it, nothing captures you like walking in this building. All right, coach. Thank you so much. Okay.